Next, I want to talk about dealer insurance. The state of Texas requires every motor vehicle driven on any roadway to be insured, including the demos and all service vehicles that are owned by your dealership. It is illegal to drive any motor vehicle in Texas without proof of insurance or some type of financial responsibility. It's also illegal for any motor vehicle owner, such as a dealer, to allow anyone else to drive the owner's vehicles, such as allowing your customers to drive your demos without insurance. Before you purchase any inventory to resell, you must obtain an insurance policy, sometimes referred to as a dealer insurance policy, or sometimes it's called a dealer garage policy. Dealer insurance is a special type of business insurance that is quite unique in nature and that it covers you when your customers are out test driving your motor vehicles. It's going to cover you when an employee or yourself is driving a vehicle back and forth from an auction. It's also going to cover you if someone is injured while on your lot. It's got medical coverage built into it as well. Very, very protective of you once you have your dealer's license. Many insurance agents do not sell dealer insurance. You might call your insurance agent to find out if they carry dealer insurance, and if they do not, you will need to contact an insurance agent agency that specializes in commercial coverage. Be sure they can explain the best type of coverage for you and your dealership. Dealer insurance pricing normally depends on the location of your dealership. So the closer you are to like a metropolitan area, the higher your rates are going to be, your experience. Dealers with the least amount of experience tend to pay the highest rates, but normally when you've got some experience under your belt, you might see a dramatic reduction in your policy pricing. And it's also dependent on the number of dealer license plates that you possess. So the lower number of dealer plates you have, normally dealer insurance tends to be lower as well. Dealer insurance, however, can be quite expensive. But however, you know, once you become an established dealer and begin generating profits, you will find that dealer insurance is really only a small part of your operational expenses. There are several types of dealer insurance, such as dealer liability, dealer's open lot, garage keepers, errors and omissions, employment practices, workers' compensation, and false pretense. Let's first talk about dealer liability, or sometimes we call it garage liability. If your customer wrecks your demo into another vehicle, it will only cover the other vehicle because it's dealer liability. So always remember, Dealer liability does not cover your property at any time. It always covers someone else's property, and it tends to be the cheapest way to get started in the business as well. But I always recommend either starting out or shortly thereafter. You might think of it as full coverage, but this next type of insurance is what we call dealer's open lot. Dealer's open lot. Dealer's open lot does not cover a specific amount of vehicles on your lot. It covers a dollar amount. So let's just say, for example, you have $50,000 worth of inventory on your lot, you need $50,000 worth of open lot coverage because you know the state of Texas has tornadoes, hails, uh, you know, hail storms. You know, remember just a couple of years ago when Hurricane Harvey hit the Gulf Coast of Texas, flooded Houston, and about 1.2 million vehicles sat underneath water for a couple of days. And if you can ever imagine, you know, throwing a computer into a bathtub for a couple of days and thinking it's going to work afterwards, well, there's really no difference uh, between that and a vehicle. So, you know, your inventory can be damaged by wind, natural disasters, uh, and dealers open a lot will normally cover you in cases of theft as well. So, you know, I have seen more than one dealer go into financial ruin because they did not have enough coverage on their inventory. So be sure to always carry enough coverage for your inventory. Another type of insurance you might look into is what we refer to as garage keepers. This covers vehicles that are owned by a customer that's leaving their vehicle with you for repairs. So if you maintain a garage, you definitely need garage keepers insurance. Errors and emissions. Errors and emissions insurance covers a dealer that failed to comply with the Federal Truth in Lending Act, or maybe made an error in paperwork submitted to the Department of Motor Vehicles, or maybe failed accidentally to disclose prior damage uh, during a title search. So that's called errors and omissions. It can be very advantageous for you to have errors and omissions in the business that you're getting ready to start. Another type of insurance you might look into is called employment practices liability. This provides coverage against sexual harassment lawsuits, wrongful termination of an employee, wage payment disputes, deprivation of career opportunity and discrimination as well. So you know, if you have employees, you might certainly talk to your insurance agent about employment practices liability insurance. Workers' compensation. 
Workers' compensation insurance provides coverage in case of workplace injury to an employee. And, you know, we are going to delve in this extensively later on. We've got a whole section on workers' compensation that we will cover here in your dealer training course in just a little while. Another type of insurance is called false pretense. And sometimes this is mixed up with errors and omissions, but it is a completely different type of policy. False pretense covers a dealer that maybe purchased a vehicle from someone that did not have the legal selling rights. And it would also cover when, say, for example, a customer purchases a vehicle from the dealer in a fraudulent manner by using a stolen ID. So definitely talk to your insurance agent about false pretense as well. You need to be aware, any dealer in Texas that does not maintain financial responsibility on service vehicles or drives a demo or allows a customer to drive a demo without financial responsibility could face severe financial and civil penalties. Now, where do you find dealer insurance? Well, you're not going to log on to Progressive or Geico and get a policy. Uh, you're not even going to be able to get an insurance policy from your state farm agent. Normally, uh, personal agents don't normally sell any type of dealer coverage. You might contact your current your current insurance agent, or you can ask other dealers, or you can always do a quick, easy internet search. And I always like to use Google. So if you're using Google, you can type in Texas Dealer Insurance. And as you can see here, there are several companies that will assist you and want to earn your business when it comes to dealer insurance. So always make sure that you have your inventory insured and any type of service vehicles as well. You're not required to have this insurance before you get your dealer's license, but you will need it before you start purchasing any type of inventory or service vehicles. Next, I want to talk about your mandatory retail contractor. Sometimes we refer to this as a bill of sale. Every retail and wholesale sale of a motor vehicle must be preceded by a written contract that contains all the agreements of the parties and shall be signed by the buyer and the seller. I want to repeat that information. Every retail and wholesale sale of a motor vehicle must be preceded by a written contract that contains all the agreements of the parties and shall be signed by both the buyer and the seller. Also, if financing is involved, state law requires you to have a retail installment contract, which can be printed if you're using any type of dealer management software. If financing is not involved, then you must still have some type of written retail contract or a bill of sale. You know, the bill of sale clarifies the terms of the motor vehicle transaction in writing, and they are mandatory on every transaction. A bill of sale is going to need to include the date of the sale, you know, the vehicle description, which would include the year, make, and model. You've always got to have your vehicle identification number on your bill of sale, and that's going to be your VIN. The name and address of the person that's purchasing the vehicle, you've always got to have that sales price on a bill of sale. All other fees and charges that are in the total cost of the vehicle, including trade-in, payoff of the trade-in, extended warranty, documentary fees, or any type of insurance, etc. And here you see just a sample bill of sale. You know, a bill of sale can easily be printed from any dealer management software that you might be using. Uh, you can also purchase bills of sale from most dealer auctions, or you might have your attorney draw you up one. A bill of sale or that retail installment contract that we'll talk about in our finance, finance section a little bit later on are required on every transaction. Once again, a bill of sale is required on every single deal. Next, let's talk about odometer disclosure and odometer tampering. The current mileage on any vehicle less than 10 years of age must be disclosed in writing. I want to repeat that. The current mileage on any vehicle less than 10 years of age must be disclosed in writing. A dealer is required by law to disclose the odometer reading at the time of the sale. The odometer reading is not needed on vehicles that are 10 or more model years old or maybe has a gross vehicle weight rating of more than 16,000 pounds, that'd be 8,400 pounds unladen, or sold by a manufacturer directly to an agency of the United States government. Well, we're not manufacturers. And it's something that's not self-propelled or is a new motor vehicle being transferred to the first retail purchaser. Dealers must disclose odometer information on every vehicle that is not exempt at the time of the sale. The state no longer requires dealers to complete an additional odometer disclosure statement that was required in the past. However, Odometer information must still be disclosed on any electronic title application or form VTR-21-A or maybe on your form 130-U. As a licensed Texas Motor Vehicle dealer, you must be aware 
of odometer, of odometer brands, which constitutes odometer tampering and odometer tampering penalties. The following chart that I will show you here displays different types of odometer brands, and this is according to the National Motor Vehicle Title Information System. This is a federal title database that we are going to cover extensively later on in the course. You know, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, more than 450,000 vehicles are sold every year with false odometer readings. This crime costs American car buyers more than $1 billion annually. I want you to know, I want you to know how to spot odometer fraud, how to protect against it, and who to contact if you think that you might be a victim of this illegal behavior. Committing odometer fraud is a crime. And the federal government passed a law that requires written disclosure of the mileage registered on an odometer at the time of the sale as well. So it's not only a state law, but it is a federal law. If the odometer mileage is incorrect, the law requires a statement to the effect to be furnished on the title to the buyer. However, as I said, vehicles 10 years and old, 10 years of old and older are exempt. So, you know, to spot odometer fraud, digital odometers that have been tampered with are even harder to detect than those older traditional mechanical odometers since they basically have no moving parts. A vehicle's condition history and a detailed history report are the best clues that a dealer has for determining whether or not odometer tampering has occurred, which is sometimes what we refer to as clocking. You know, if you ever do suspect odometer fraud, maybe on a vehicle that you've taken on a trade or maybe on a vehicle that you are purchasing from an individual, say, for example, uh, you can contact the National Highway, Trafety, uh, National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration's Vehicle Safety Hotline at 888-327-4236. And you may also contact the National Highway Traffic Safety Office of Odometer investigations fraud, and that's going to be a Washington uh, address that you see there in your manual. But I want to give you some helpful tips that can help you detect if a vehicle has an odometer that has been tampered with. And it can be difficult, but it is not impossible to detect a vehicle's odometer that has been clocked. Always ask to see the vehicle's title and compare that mileage listed on it with the value that is on the odometer. Make sure that they're uh, close to being the same. Inspect the title closely to see if mileage has been obscured or maybe if it's hard to read. Compare the mileage on the odometer with the mileage reported on the vehicle's maintenance or inspection record. So when possible, you know, you might check the mileage listed on an oil chain sticker or a maintenance sticker that you see maybe in the window or on a door jam. You know, if you see an, the oil change needs to be changed at 50,000 miles and you see the odometer is only 5,000 miles, well, that's that's a pretty long period between an oil change. That would definitely be a red flag. But uh, normally these stickers can be found maybe on the front windshield, windshield or a door jam or maybe in the glove box or even sometimes underneath the vehicle's hood. You know, if a vehicle has a traditional mechanical odometer, one of the older ones, check that the numbers on the odometer gauge are aligned correctly. If the numbers are crooked or if they contain gaps or you know, if they jiggle or something like that, uh, they may have been subject to odometer tampering. Inspect the tires and measure the depth of the tread. If the odometer on that vehicle reads 20,000 or miles, 20,000 or less miles, then the vehicle should still have its original tires. Look at the wear and tear on the vehicle, you know, especially the gas and brake and clutch pedals to see if the wear seems consistent with and appropriate for the number of miles displayed on the odometer. When you suspect an odometer has rolled over, for example, maybe you have a vehicle with an odometer that's reading 23,000 miles, but you're fairly certain it's probably rolled over and it might read, it might be 123,000 or 223,000, but the only, uh, the odometer only has five digits, then you would need to mark mileage in excess of mechanical limits on the back of the title, also on that Form 130-U. And that would only be referring to vehicles with a five-digit odometer. You know, if an odometer is broken, inoperable, or has been replaced, then you certainly want to give the notice on that as well. Resetting, disconnecting, or altering a vehicle's odometer to conceal the true mileage is absolutely illegal. It's illegal for anyone to engage in odometer tampering, and it's also illegal to sell a vehicle knowing the odometer has been altered without informing the purchaser in writing. So dealers are strictly prohibited from fraudulently tampering with an odometer to reduce the miles indicated on that odometer. And this is a federal and state law with some very, very serious criminal penalties. And besides the criminal penalties, a person would probably be permanently be denied a dealer's license, not only in the state of Texas, but any other state as well. So dealers should ext use extreme caution when purchasing used vehicles with low miles 
and expect them for signs of odometer tampering. Okay, so, you know, odometer tampering can lead to substantial time in jail and significant fines as well. Under federal law, persons found guilty of numerous incidents of odometer fraud have been sentenced to up to nine years in prison and fined more than $400,000. So odometer fraud is never tolerated by the state of Texas, and it is never tolerated by the United States government. Failure to comply with odometer disclosure and odometer tampering laws could lead to the revocation of your dealer's license, along with very, very extensive penalties. Sales to minors. The legal age at which a person becomes competent to enter into a contract in Texas is 18 years old. No person under the age of 18 years can purchase or sell a vehicle in Texas without a parent, legal guardian, or other person that has legal custody. A contract to purchase a vehicle signed by anyone younger than 18 years old is invalid and may be voided. You know, if you sold a vehicle to a minor, they could release themselves from the sales contract, return that vehicle, and recover the vehicle purchase price, even though that vehicle has possibly been wrecked or deteriorated in value. You know, worst case scenario, you could sell, say, for example, a motorcycle to some 17-year-old kid that gives you $5,000 in cash, and this kid could ride that motorcycle down the street and total it out, and the law would allow him to basically drag that back into your dealership, and you would have to give him the entire purchase price back, and you would have absolutely no legal or financial recourse against that person because they were not old enough to sign a legally binding contracts. So you always want to make sure that someone on the deal is at least 18 years of age when signing all vehicle documentation.